let's do another DJI Osmo tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to use the OM4, aka Osmo Mobile 4, Osmo Mobile 3, Osmo Mobile 2, or Osmo Mobile OG. What you're going to see today is how I actually use this in an everyday real life situation. And actually the footage that we got behind the scenes of me using this is actually a viral reel that I posted on Instagram not too long ago. And it's racked up over eight and a half million views on my page alone. And it's been shared by Nature and Beautiful Destinations. I'm not lying to you. I'm not sugarcoating anything. There are no secrets. We're gonna take everything that we've learned in my other videos. And we're gonna apply it while also still learning new filmmaking techniques with a mobile gimbal. If you notice that I said mobile quite a few times, it's because I'm specifically referring to the Osmo Mobile, which means the videos are actually taken on my phone, whether it was the content from my iPhone 11 Pro or my iPhone 12 Pro. And as you can see, it's compatible with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Holds it great. The point is the footage is not coming from the Osmo Mobile. The footage is coming from the phone. And the only reason I'm specifying that is because the Osmo is its very own product. It was the first original gimbal that had a camera built into it. Remember, there's also also the DJI Osmo Action, the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 and 1, which I don't currently own, and the original DJI Osmo. And these are totally different products, so I just wanted to make sure that we don't have any confusion there. So I'm gonna assume that if you are watching this video right now, it's because you already have your OM4 and you're ready to go and you're ready to use it, or you're wondering what all the hype is about in mobile phone gimbals. And you're asking yourself, do I really even need a phone gimbal? Well, if you're looking to efficiently and effectively create content that is not too overwhelming, but is still very high quality, you might just need an Osmo Mobile or just a phone gimbal in general. Handheld footage, be gone. Now I've already made the entire tutorial walkthrough guide with literally every function of the Osmo Mobile 4, but that's a completely different video. And because you asked so many amazing questions on the Osmo Mobile 4, I will answer all of those questions at the end of this video. Make sure you stay till the end of this one if you want to get those answers. Now before we get started, let's get started. Let's make sure our phone is actually balanced on the Osmo Mobile before we even turn it on because it's just going to make our lives so much easier. No phone case because that's just going to throw the whole calibration off. Now if we're using the magnet clamp, what we want to make sure is that the camera icon is facing up towards our phone camera. We'll place it on. I usually cover the logo with the magnet and that usually gives us a pretty good balance to start with. So once you have it facing towards you, turn the DJI logo upward and just clamp your phone on. As you can see, the phone does not stand still at all. That's a problem. To make sure that we have a good balance, we want to make sure that no matter where we place our phone, it holds in place. So the way to adjust this is to first hold onto the axis of your gimbal. We're going to try and balance it vertically. In order to do that, we move our phone up and down. Now I know I made that look way too easy. I didn't expect it to be that easy. The next thing you want to check is horizontally. So if you hold it horizontally and it falls to one side, you are just going to want to push it left to right. And now it's good to go. Now, if you're still having issues balancing and it won't hold upright or horizontally, you can slide the clamp from left to right. That would be the last thing that I would check if you're still having issues. Now we have a properly balanced phone. And when we turn on the Osmo Mobile, it's gonna be just so much easier and more convenient to use. Once you're good to go, we're just gonna push the power button. You will hear that beautiful sound. And now we're ready to head out to the mountain so I can show you exactly what this thing is capable of. Let's go. As I previously mentioned in the last videos, connecting to the DJI Mimo app and auto calibrating your device is probably the most essential thing that you can do. This will solve the majority of any sort of tilting and rotating issues that you're gonna have. And it synchronizes your Osmo for best possible results. Just because this is a video doesn't mean that we shouldn't treat your starting frame like a photo. Whenever I pull up to a location, I try to find my favorite frame as if I was just taking a photo of it. Even if the main subject of your video is going to be a person walking through, you still wanna make sure that you capture the entire image and the entire background around them. You still wanna have that whole epic location in the entire frame as much as you can. I'm trying to think of like the motion we could go in. Do you wanna like safely step from where the snow is where you feel comfortable? Now that you found your starting frame, you gotta find your end frame. Even before you start rolling or start shooting, take them to a final end frame that also looks like it could be a photo itself. So let's talk about our body motion. 
but we need to know when to speed up and when to slow down. Especially with a gimbal like this, there's not a lot of custom changes you can make to it, so it accelerates really quickly. Now, I know this is a gimbal, but it's still very important to lock your arm to make sure that your body motion is smooth and there's not like little wobbles throughout the shot. So when we're in a place like this where it's pretty enclosed, there's not a ton of room to move around, the best shot is gonna be slow movement. That way we can still pull off a five to 10 second clip without having to run through the entire place, especially when you're literally standing on ice. I know it's gonna look ridiculous, but don't move your feet. Keep them locked, just like this. And then you just wanna make sure you move your body. That way there's not any little micro steps and your camera doesn't go up and down and the shot doesn't wobble in any way, shape, or form. Three, two, one, action. I'm gonna start doing vlogs. Just look at this guy. This guy's trying to be an influencer, but he's not really doing a good job. But we'll see what happens. Let's talk about tracking. Now, if you're gonna be using the DJI Mimo app, you can use something like Active Track to give you a bit of assistance with it. But if you're gonna be using third party apps like I do, you're gonna have to learn how to track somebody manual. My tip for when you're gonna be following people, let me rephrase that. My tip for when you're gonna be tracking people is to set a constant distance between you and your subject. So right here we have our model and we're gonna find the perfect framing before we start moving at all. I'll find a perfect distance between us with the correct frame and that's how we're gonna stay the entire shot. And action. If you're running some sort of action sequence where there's any sort of motion, do it a few times before you start recording. That way you can expect where the model's gonna move left or right or shift, and when you're gonna have to make changes. And you don't have to do that on the fly. That way you get the perfect shot the first time. We're about like 10 to 15 minutes into it right now and sometimes that's as long as it takes just to find the one shot that you want to get. We haven't even got the shot yet but I know the shot that we want to get and unfortunately it's like minus 15 right now and she's absolutely freezing. <laughs> it's not easy being a model. Thanks so much. You're welcome. I'm going to do my best just to get this done as fast as I can. I'm going to try the exact same shot like four or five times and then I'm sure we'll get it. How fun was that? <laughs> we totally just went to the mountains and now we're shooting the rest of this video. Anyways, I know that I'm using this from a filmmaker standpoint, and now it might feel like all of those clips I just gave you were only applicable for one shot, long takes, or one clippers as I call them, but they're not. These techniques can also be utilized and applicable for every single shot that you take, whether you're making one take short videos, TikToks, Instagram reels, or even for shooting full length videos. So definitely do not feel discouraged if you're not shooting the exact same style of content that I am. It's just become so much easier and more apparent to me that my filmmaking techniques transferred over from using full size gimbals to this setup because it is so much lighter and so much easier. And now that you know that you need one of these Osmo mobiles, feel free to support the channel by using the link in the description. It's an affiliate link. I get a bit of kickback, but in all reality, if you want to use this thing right away, DJI probably won't ship it as fast as it would be for you to go and get it. So I would rather you have it and go and use it than for me to get 5% of an affiliate link. But another way to support the channel is to just subscribe or to share this video with somebody that you think would love to see it so that I can make more videos for free and keep growing on YouTube. That's all I can ask from you. And make sure to leave a comment on this video if you have further questions. I'm still gonna answer those other questions from the last video. If you love this video and you want more behind the scenes style content, I would love to make it, but I just need to know if that's something of interest. When I inevitably think of more tips and tricks to use 
for the Osmo Mobile or gimbal using in general. I will put all of those into another video and I will be making a follow-up video specifically on how we made that viral reel. So make sure to subscribe, ring that bell if you wanna be notified when I post those videos. Until then, feel free to follow me on Instagram if you wanna see the reels that I've been making or need some sort of inspiration or idea for creating Instagram reels or TikToks. First and foremost, I have not made the editing on my phone video yet because I just have not been able to go YouTube full time yet. I have full intentions of making that in the upcoming months. I just have not had the time. I'm only at 6,000 subscribers and it's definitely not enough to support me financially. So I'm still making all of my commercial content on the side while I make these YouTube videos. That video is coming and I promise you I will make it. For now, I will just remind you that I mainly just use the Moment app. I think it's called the Moment Camera app now. I think it changed his name. That's what I use to get the best bit rate and quality out of my camera. But for most editing, I'm literally just doing it on my phone. I'm trimming the video in photos and I'm gonna be adding a color gray to it on Visco. That's mainly my secrets for now. There's a few other tricks in that video and I promise it's coming. So just, you know, keep supporting the channel. Help me pay rent. <laughs> Does this work on the iPhone 12 Pro? Well, as you can see here, I have been using it on my iPhone 12 Pro, and I've also used it on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It does work. Now, when it comes to the HDR footage, there is a bit of an issue that I've found. I'm really hoping a lot of the apps, including Instagram, are going to update, considering it is one of the newest phones and they should have been ready for that. But my main workaround right now has just been using the Moment app because it records the video in different settings. So you can actually just easily color grade and upgrade it there. It's only been seven or eight months since the phone came out, you know? <laughs> Don't know how much longer we're gonna have to wait for that one. But yes, it will support the weight of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So I would suggest using a third-party app such as the Moment app or use a third-party app that actually records the video for you in the app or just turn off the HDR mode recording in your phone and that will solve the issue for you for the time being. If you are nervous about not using a case on your phone, I totally understand that and you can use a case on your phone with the Osmo Mobile. I just need to suggest that you don't because that's what DJI suggests and I do not want to be held responsible for something. I have used it with a case before. I just do not go around and tell people to do it because that would be my responsibility. But for the most part on most phones, if they are thin enough, you can have a case and it will fit in this clamp. Either than that, you can use the Osmo Mobile 3 or you know, like super glue that magnet onto your phone case. If you are having issues with your phone tilting left and right while you are in the tilt lock mode, what you need to do is press and hold the trigger. This way your phone will be locked in place no matter where you move it. Should be as easy as that. I hope that solves that issue. If you are wondering why there is a giant gap between your zooms when you go from one times all the way up to six times or when you're switching into the wide angle, that is because you are using three different cameras or two different cameras on your cell phone. So you are literally switching cameras. There's no real workaround to that. That is just how the camera image looks and that's just how it works, unfortunately. If you're doing an interview with this, I would suggest just using it as a tripod. I wouldn't necessarily use the active track in case for whatever reason it decides to just switch and track something else. I don't know many interviews where you are moving that much. So what I would suggest is just to shoot a bit wide and you know, just make sure you get the shot nice and steady. This will work on a tripod. You can literally just unscrew this and it's a regular tripod thread on the bottom of it. This will not tilt down all the way, unfortunately. You'll get about a 45 degree angle view, but you will see the foot of the tripod in your shot. This is as far as it's gonna tilt. So unfortunately, you cannot do a top down with this. But what you would need would be a tripod that actually does the overhead tilt. So it's just a basic tripod thread here, and you would attach your phone this way. And I know you can rent those tripods for as little as $6 a day. So if you don't wanna buy one, I would suggest at least going and renting it for that day that you're gonna be shooting. So with my current setup, it's held straight up for over half an hour. So depending on how long you are looking to film for, make sure that you check on it from time to time. But other than that, it is an amazing tripod itself, or you can just go and get a phone tripod. As of this moment, there is no streaming through the DJI Mimo app. I don't know if they will change it, but that is a great suggestion and I will email in and you know give that feedback to them. DJI is really good with getting feedback. So if you have any ideas or 
feedback for the app or the device, definitely feel free to comment it and I will pass it on. Okay, so this is not an ad, but I get a lot of questions about mounting lenses to the iPhone. I currently do not mount lenses to the iPhone because I use the iPhone to look like an iPhone. I use the Moment app to make it look a little bit more sharp, but if I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna shoot a full cinematic video, I'm going to be using the R5, which is recording me right now. Personally, I think the lenses are really nice and the iPhone is so powerful and a lot of people just totally underutilize it. They feel like they need to spend three to $10,000 on a camera when they haven't really used many, when their iPhone with a couple of lenses would suffice. But I do not personally have a definitive answer on that right now. I do not use lenses on this, but my friends at Polar Pro did send some different lenses for me to try out on it. Just check the weight of it and add it to the weight of your phone and see if it falls in that guideline that they give you. And again, I think you can go a bit overweight, but it wouldn't be for long. Eventually the gimbal will get tired and it will fall over. So as long as you're doing very short shots or just make sure to pay attention how long your takes are going to be, try to keep them to a minimal if you can. I have not been paid by Polar Pro to bring those into this video. I'm just really excited to try them because ND filters are really important in general and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the difference is on an iPhone. So if you've thought of any new questions, feel free to ask those. If you haven't asked any questions yet, definitely participate. Give some feedback, whether it's to me on my videos or whether it's on the devices. And I do my best to take that into account with every single video that I make. So I will try my best to get to every question eventually. So make sure to subscribe, ring that bell if you wanna be notified when I post those videos. Thanks for sticking to the end. You're the best, I love you. And I'll see you in the next one. Just keep doing it. <laughs> it's a bad catchphrase and I will work on that. The sun is now coming in and hitting me from this side. So I need to get out of here because my whole composition is being compromised. Have a great one.